Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host and the founder of Casual Cattle Conversations, a global rancher education company that strives to bring honest thoughts and conversations from ranchers and leaders to other ranchers. Be sure to follow Cattle Convos on social media to have more in-depth conversations around the ranching business and lifestyle brought to you. If you are ready to take your operation to the next level and improve your lifestyle too, send me a message about my Rancher Mind group. Rancher Minds are monthly roundtable discussions for ranchers to learn from peers and experts and leave the call with actionable advice to make changes on their own operations. With that, let's see who our guest is today and what experience and advice they have to offer you to improve your own operation. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for joining me on the show today. It's great to have you here. And I would really like to hear a little bit about your role with Gallagher and the beef industry. Just talk about briefly what you do and share that with my audience. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm Buddy Rowlett. I'm director of sales for the South and the West United States. So I have eight territory managers scattered around that I help as a team to go out and call on retail or to call on farmers and ranchers, help them with fence problems, scale problems, uh, show them new technology that maybe will make their life a little easier. So that's kind of what we do at Gallagher. Well, that's exciting to hear because on this show, we're all about improving ranches and making life easier. So with that, would you provide, today we're talking about grounding fences, getting a good ground and ensuring that we're doing that properly so that we have the most success with our electric fencing. Would you give a basic rundown on what grounding looks like for electric fences? Sure. So a lot of it depends on where you are in the United States and how much rainfall you get. So basically there's two ways to build electric fence. When we go to the east where we get rainfall, we build an all hot system. And what that means is every wire in the fence is hooked to the hot terminal on your fencer. And then you have a ground rods or rods. We recommend a minimum of three on a permanent system that are six feet long, driven 10 feet apart. And that's on no matter whether it's a hot or ground system, we want plenty of ground. Think about your ground system or your ground rods as being like the antenna on your car. So the farther you get from the radio station, the bigger antenna you need. Well, the more fence you build, the bigger ground system you need. So that's kind of the way I help farmers realize, put it all in perspective. But uh, we need three ground rods minimum. And then if you have a hot ground system, when you go out west where it's more arid and you don't have the grass and stuff on the ground, then we need a run one wire that's hooked to the hot terminal on the fence and one wire hooked to the green terminal on the fence or the ground terminal, and then hook back into your ground rods as well. So any farm call we make, 80% of the time, it's because it's a grounding issue. So what would you say are some of those, like, I mean, most common grounding issues? I mean, you talked about, you know, a good ground and what you're looking for. So would you expand more on what some of those grounding issues are that farmers and ranchers can avoid? Um, They try to use the steel post in their fence for a ground rod that's only driven in about 18 inches. Your ground rod has got to be down to permanent moisture for it to conduct electricity. Um, They use a rusty piece of rebar and just loosely wrap a wire around it and they don't have a good connection. Uh, Rust is an insulator to some degree, so we recommend galvanized rods, galvanized wire, galvanized clamps. Since you're building a galvanized fence, we do not want to mix metals and get corrosion that way either. But generally, they just do not put enough metal in the ground for a conductor. All right, so when you're looking at the impact on the overall fencing structure, obviously like a good ground impacts the amount of power that's going or electricity that's going through that fencing system. Do you want to talk more about how that ground impacts the overall fencing system? Okay. Um, You got the farther you go, like I said earlier, the, and the drier the ground or the drier the conditions, the more ground rods you have to have. It's about the surface area of the ground rods. 
and how much, how many ground rods. So when we get up to our 50 joule energizers, we may recommend 10 to 15 ground rods. Uh, you talk about rotational grazing, small solar units, one three foot ground rod may be enough if you're only going a quarter of a mile. But the more fence you build, the more grounding you have to have. And good tight connections are very important. Another thing to remember is on hot ground systems, you have to carry your, if you have a gateway, you have to carry your hot and your ground wires under the gateway. You have to connect everything back to the ground rod. So what are some of the best ways to do that then with those gateways? Because that is another step. So what are some of the methods that you recommend? Um, I recommend a undergate cable that is made for electric fencing. So we get people that want to use wire that came out of an old house or off the old grain truck or something to use for electric fence wire. Well, if you look on Romex, it's rated for 600 volts. So our we're putting seven to 8,000 volts through this fence. So it's like trying to use a garden hose for a hydraulic hose. There's just not enough insulation there to contain it. The other thing is you always want to protect that wire going under gateway. So you want to put it in conduit or pipe or something. As we drive through those gateways and rocks rub on that wire, even though that insulation is double coated urethane, over years, we'll still get something puncturing that insulation. So really recommend to protect those wires going under those gateways with conduit, some pipe you've got laying around or anything just to keep from tire traffic from wearing through that wire. Well, those are all amazing and very applicable tips. So is there a way that, is there a place or resources that ranchers can go to for more information on obtaining proper grounds to make sure that they have it right the first time? Absolutely. Uh, if you go to Gallagher USA North America and search or go on YouTube and search for proper grounding techniques, there's some really good videos that show you about grounding. Um, you can reach out at 1-800-531-5908 and have a territory manager in your area contact you and they will walk you through the grounding or if you've got other issues we make a lot of ranch calls no matter whether it's a gallagher energizer or somebody else's if we can help somebody have a good experience with power fence we feel like it's worth the call well buddy i appreciate you being on the show today is there anything else you would like to share um, to my audience as they are, it's a pretty wide audience. They're all 50 States, uh, Canada, Australia. So is there any other, um, tips or information you'd like to share before we wrap up today? Um, you know, electric fence, power fence, whatever you want to call it, is probably the most effective barrier we can build. I mean, we fence everything from snakes out of power plants to elephants around the world. Gallagher's worldwide. So there's not much anything that has a nervous system we can't keep in or out. So don't hesitate no matter what you're trying to do. Uh, give us a call. I was on a place last week in Texas and we were designing a system for black rhinos. So if there you nothing you've got will surprise your territory manager when you call them and you're trying to contain something or exclude something. Well, Thank you for being on the show and thank you for sharing all that information with us. We'll make sure that that contact information gets into the show notes so that uh, today's listeners can uh, contact you with it or contact Gallagher with any questions as they arise. Thank you, buddy. Well, thank you for having us. And that's a wrap on that one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the episode. And if you have any further questions around the topic, take care and have a great day.